Good afternoon. My name is Lauren Deeg. I'm an Associate Professor of Urban Planning. Welcome to our final presentation of Camp 101 and 161 for Section 1 Spring Admission Class of the College of Architecture and Planning Common First Year Program. I hope you enjoy all of the students' presentations. Following a number of research and articles following um, uh, our summer of COVID-19, uh, it was observed by many folks uh, in our allied industries that um, opportunities to get outside and commune with nature, uh, fresh air, and a socially distanced matter was necessary. So we've been uh, perusing a number of readings and articles uh, on the subject of social distancing in nature. It's also widely uh, accepted across several different uh, cultures and traditions that uh, a relationship with nature is necessary for whole health. Students have been experiencing and reading different portions of the a seminal text called Invisible Cities by Italo Calvino. This is a book that came out in the early 1970s that uh, speaks of several mythical cities or imaginary cities. And so a number of our uh, fundamental uh, and beginning projects were inspired by the imagery uh, contained in this particular book um, of several different fictional cities that the students uh, studied and then made projects from. You'll hear ne uh, several of the students refer to their chosen city uh, in, in several of the projects that they will describe and eventually inform their final project for the semester. We studied three sites on the Ball State campus for consideration in which the students could uh, interject a small uh, folly or uh, uh, architectural expression, uh, outdoor pavilion or a uh, small park or a small park uh, setting. Uh, we begin with what, what many Ball State alumni, myself included, um, know as the Duck Pond or what we now call Duck Pond 1. This is part of the uh, natural storm drainage system of the Ball, of the Ball State campus uh, and is a feature of our entry sequence coming off of uh, Indiana 332. Uh, to, to the uh, western portion of, of Duck Pond 1, there is a channel that goes underneath uh, McKinley Avenue our north residential neighborhood with many of the northern student dormitories are just to the south of the duck pond. Here's a topo map with three possible sites that I indicated for the students to, to, to possibly study. A few photographs of duck pond in its current conditions. Hello, my name is Erin Goldman and I'm another student here in CAP Studio. And today I'll be showing you the tree path my final project. So my site is Duck Pond 1. You can see the two pictures of the site here. There is a Google Earth image and one uh, more eye level view from across, the, from across the pond. And here are some more site photos I took of the site. I took note of uh, numerous large trees, and here is my site analysis of that site. I took some notes that I transcripted from my actual drawing just so they were easy to read. So I realized the site could use more seating and more accessibility. And when I was prompted to create this site, I wanted to, pulling from my city, Baucis, I wanted to pull from the main idea that I came in with that I wanted to hold throughout the project. And that is to emphasize the division between the sky and the earth. And you can see that depicted here in my emblem and you will also see it uh, represented in my design. And I also wanted to pull some inspiration from my ball project because I really liked um, exploring circulation. That was really interesting to me. I'm a very active person and I really enjoy exploring how I can move through the space. So I decided to pull some aspects like the looping curves and the elbows and the way you could move underneath that, through that, around that. I wanted to pull that and bring that into my project. So with that, I started beginning my sketches. I started very general, working like getting my ideas out on the page, even if I didn't like settle on them, I decided to get, I wanted to get them all out there. and pull what I could, pull what I liked from that. And you can see also on the right, I have a lot of uh, notes. I did a lot of research for this project to see if there was anything I would like to pull 
from campus history or any motifs around that surround Ball State's design or its history that I that I liked and I would think I could reflect in this project. I didn't pull much, but I did settle on the Ball Jars, which you may know the Ball Brothers were huge manufacturers of. And as I um, started focusing, like I eventually got to the point where you could see on the right hand side, top right, I as I was talking to my professor, I made this, I drew this looping shape and I really like that shape. So that became the groundwork for moving forward with my project. And the ball glass jars, I really like the idea of exploring to making a shelter out of that. We were pushed to make protection from the wind and the rain. So I thought that I could use the ball glass jars or a mock idea of that in my project to create a kind of shelter with them. So moving forward with that, this idea of this looping towards the water, going back up towards the street, trees and having an accessible stairway connect through them, I began my modeling process. I'm a very strong drawer but I'm not as good as a modeler. I had less experience with doing that, but I realized that if I wanted to accurately uh, see how this shape would fit the landscape, I would need to model it. And around this time is also when I began my site perspectives, figuring out how this would look in a really nice drawing. So I created these two right here. I'm really happy with how they turned out. They ended up looking a little different than the final project. You see this little arc um, on the right um, with my two-point perspective, how the railing kind of loops over, creating a little arc for you to go through. That didn't end up making it into the final project, but I did explore that from my model, and it was an interesting idea that maybe I would have followed through if I had more time. And then here's my section cut, a bit more updated. You can see how it loops down towards the water and up into the trees. I really like, you can see that emphasis between the interaction of the ground and like the sky at the same time. And with all that, here is my final model, the result. Uh, the main platform, as I said, is made out of foam core. And I made the smaller features like the seats and the railing all out of a um, map board. I will move myself so you can get a look at that. On the right, you see some close-ups. You can see that glass shelter again, and it ended up being very cool to see how the light worked with that. Here are some more close-ups. I liked getting my camera down into the site so I can see what it might feel like to actually be in this space, and you can really feel the grand um, atmosphere of traveling through these trees through this long winding path. Here's some more close up of the little glass shelter, the loop, another angle to look at the comprehensive structure. And I believe this should be my last slide. So here we have a site that is fully accessible via wheelchair but you can also have some fun going around the steps. Also like this little boy scale figure down here playing on little surfaces. And yeah, you can have your short experience and just go down the water or you climb all the way up and, and interact with the trees. And when I go to a site, I love to experience all levels. And there's also plenty of the natural landscape also left in this site. So if you wanted to just experience the landscape in its most natural form, you can still do that. There are rocks by the trees and, and the site itself can almost act as a shelter itself. So if you wanted to get underneath that long winding path, you could definitely do that. So yeah, thank you for, um, watching my little section here. And yeah, I really enjoyed making this project and I hope you enjoyed looking at it. Thank you. Hello, my name is Andy Mossberger. This is the Pondside Pavilion uh, project um, for 161 and 101. Uh, for this project, we were tasked with creating a 
um, a structure, uh, a pavilion, or like a jetty, a jetty uh, engaging a body of water where people can go out and uh, enjoy and spend time with other people, um, but also be sheltered from the weather and uh, like the wind and the wind and the rain. So we were given three locations to choose from, from this, for this project, uh, all next to bodies of water. Uh, I chose this location uh, next to Pond One. <clears throat> this is near the north end of campus. Um, as you can see, uh, there's this little square here. That's about the border of my project uh, site. So um, there are about a dozen trees within that square. Uh, it's on a very gentle slope. Um, and it's also got uh, the tennis courts right behind it here. Um, there's a parking lot uh, the northwest here. And then McKinley Avenue runs um, to the south and up uh, around the west end of that pond. So the first thing I did uh, for this project was I went and I analyzed the site. So I did a site analysis. and. So I went out and I visited the site. I approximated, you know, where the trees are um, within that area, um, and you know, really looked and found good perspectives of places to enter and exit the site. Um, I also made a list of the different strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats presented by the site. Um, so opportunities for seeding, for different water quality, um, and then that shelter from the wind and the weather. So even though this was its own project, I, um, I got a lot of inspiration from previous projects that we've been doing over the semester. So from the very beginning of the semester, we have um, been working with a a fictional city that we chose from the text Invisible Cities. Uh, the city that I chose was Isara. And this is a city that is, um, it sits above a, an underground uh, pool. So generating lots of images of pipes and rock formations and water wheels, uh, things like that. And then one of our first assi assignments uh, with that was to create an emblem for our city. So uh, as you can see, I've got pipes, um, these water wheels, um, cave structures, things like that. And so with that, um, the next assignment was to create a lot of remixed uh, iterations of that emblem. So taking it further, um, really exploring what can we what we can do with that imagery. And then uh, from that creating a shield for our city um, on foam core uh, using a lot of that same imagery. So the imagery here is really consistent throughout these different projects that we're doing. One of the later projects that we um, were assigned was to create a city model um, using a uh, kind of tile map, a 2D tile map that we generated and kind of pulling shapes out of that. So this was our first um, assignment that had to do with um, three dimensions. So until then we were drawing things flat, but now we're starting to pull them out. And so as you can see from these images, um, my map had a lot of circles um, and sharp angles. So I had a lot of um, opportunity to extrude from those, uh, these pipes, these kind of pipe looking structures, um, these jagged, uh, angled ceilings um, and curved walls, things like that. That was really interesting to get to uh, start pulling things out of um, a flat image. One last project that uh, influenced my final design was um, this ping project, uh, we called it. Uh, so this was a horizontal circulation um, study where we uh, created a marble track uh, for three different um, sized balls that would go through. And we were studying um, how these different shaped or sized balls moved, uh, how they interacted with gravity, 
and we made different paths for them uh, based on how based on those movements. Um, and again, I was able to incorporate a lot of imagery of like these pipes, um, different uh, angles and pathways, and then these arches down here. Um, very cool. And uh, as you can see, we've got a lot of differing pathways. Um, one of the bigger balls would go down this way while the smaller ones would come um, from this pipe here. Uh, this was probably my favorite project of the semester. And so we come to the final project at last. Um, this is the model that I made for the final project. As you can see, there are a lot of similar themes um, from those previous assignments. You can see I've got a lot of uh, these curved waves. Those are very reminiscent of text and the lapping of the waves in that underground pool. Um, I've got these different pathways for different, um, differently abled people um, that are you know, some people are more energetic and they might want um, a more direct path to a place. Um, some might want a path that is more accessible. And so being able to um, incorporate the needs of uh, all different types of people here. Um, and then again, those waves being incorporated in seating in these, uh, these raised uh, shelters. Um, and different sharp angles here in the gardens too. Uh, so to begin this process, I drafted some perspectives of what I might want this project to look like. Um, again, I knew I wanted to use uh, wavy shapes, um, lots of gentle curves, um, like this wall here. And then maybe some sharp angles too, um, but keeping it uh, keeping it kind of open. And then um, back to the site analysis, knowing that I needed to um, provide some seating um, and some shelter as well. So I have these uh, uh, different roofs uh, to keep the rain off and different seating here. Um, trying to figure out, you know, how am I going to do this? Uh, practically, but still um, tie it all back into that, those different projects and the imagery that I've been using so far. So the next step I did was to actually create a model of, um, or a digital model in SketchUp. So I recreated the um, base that we had made already physically in class. Um, we made a large base out of cardboard and paper mache. And so I was able to photograph that and then trace on lines and extrude up from that to recreate it digitally. Um, and then I just started uh, you know, building what I had in my head and what I had already drawn in those draft perspectives. So, after that, um, there was only so much I could do before I realized that, you know, I need to actually start building something. I need to, um, I have enough designed already. Um, I just need to start getting stuff together. So something that um, kind of came to me uh, that I hadn't really realized until I started building was um, the angles uh, here um, on these, uh, the corners of these railings here are very reminiscent of uh, the um, some shapes from my shield, uh, these kind of angles here. And that was not intentional, but uh, it's funny how that worked out. And then um, I've got these curved pathways uh, as well as some uh, sharp angled ramps. Uh, make this accessible for everyone. And then these uh, edges on the gardens too, inspired by the, um, the rock formation imagery, uh, the sharp angles and the uh, straight lines. So after I built the model, I was able to generate some final perspective drawings on those. This is my one point perspective. Um, it was really cool to see this done. Um, I have a final model and to uh, 
uh, kind of visualize how it would look in the space. And then my two point perspective, um, this one's a little wider, you can see a little bit more of the context here. Um, but uh, this was a good way to see uh, how people might interact with the space, um, how they might approach it. And um, you can still see some of that imagery there, uh, the waves, um, and then these uh, the vertical columns um, being very uh, similar to the look, uh, the look of pipes, the pipes from the uh, small city model. And so uh, this is the end of my presentation. Um, I, overall, I thought this was a very cool project. Um, I really enjoyed how all of the different projects kind of accumulated and um, I was able to compile ideas from one of those and use those in this final project. Thank you. Duck Pond 2 is an extension of the original Duck Pond. We call it Duck Pond 2 because uh, it was added recently. It, it, had, it occurs on the western side of McKinley Avenue and then is channeled into what be, eventually becomes uh, York Prairie Creek, which then flows towards Yorktown. This parking lot uh, services uh, the North Residential Neighborhood as, as well as uh, some of the other offices, as well as the geothermal plant uh, with the geothermal sites. Uh, on the other side of the athletic field. So McKinley Avenue runs in between the two duck ponds here. Anthony Apartments is located to the north. Three possible sites that I had indicated uh, for, for possible interventions, uh, some with more woods than others, others with, uh, with western and southern exposures. Some photos of the existing conditions. Okay, hello everyone, my name is Anaya, and this is my final presentation. Um, I named my project Zenobia's Pavilion because I started the semester off with the Invisible City of Zenobia, and most of everything I created is based off of this Invisible City. First things up is the site. So the site I chose was Duck Pond 2. I visited the site to take inventory on what was already there, and I made a site analysis as seen in the right hand side on your screen. And I made um, I made the site analysis to see what I can create in a given space. And while I was there, I thought about how I could include the surrounding trees um, as seen on the left picture, and how I could include accessibility considering that um, the site would or the structure would lay on the hill. Um, when starting this project, using the plot, the patterns from this shield I created in Unit 2.2 really helped define the space. As my first inspiration, it made me consider the sharp edges and the uh, functional shading um, into my concept. My inspiration two, um, I was also inspired by the open air theater from Migia in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. This project was created by landscape architect, excuse me, uh, Holly Witch Kushner um, and Dietmeyer Stark. The idea uh, was creating a pavilion that aids social gathering and harnesses the inclusion of open space. Uh, that was a common theme in this project. And I wanted to dress it in my own. Uh, and also like the open cutouts were a big um, inspiration to me too. Um, my last inspiration or factor to deciding how my overall design will look um, came from our vertical circulation project in Unit 4.2. The triangle cutouts in the back uh, were really a connection I made from this project to my final design, as seen in the last inspiration also. I also transferred the spiral staircase that was like the second mechanism of the um, structure um just to create levels in my pavilion these are my sketches um they're one point two point and i did do a section view of how i think the space would um, look like uh, these were a little bit more on brand of exactly how i thought they were gonna come out to be um but yeah i really like the design of the sketches um and the difference the study model the study model i was creating it was a push for me because i am more comfortable with paper and pencil i seen in my last sketches 
but because it's most times faster and I usually get a, a general clear idea of what I want to do. Although in this model, I was able to comprehend the depth of the space I was given and the model makes it clear what is attainable in real life when actually building, um, especially using skill models because uh, you can see how a person will react in the space. Um, in this project, I also did use SketchUp. It was not a requirement, although I am like practicing more about how I am using SketchUp. Um, and it's very helpful to understand, again, like with the, the study model, how um, things could be attainable uh, rather than just drawing squiggly lines on a paper. My final perspective drawings um, were one of my favorites this semester because um, the two point on the right more so because it included a drastic change in depth from the top of the pavilion in the foreground to the rest of the structure in the back. Um, and there's just tons of detail and yeah, it's amazing. Now my final design um, was very rewarding. When creating this model, I was hyper aware of the glue uh, not showing. I um, made this plan as straightforward as I can. Um, downside, I did want to include a balcony on the right side of the um, part where it hangs over the land. Although I just did not have the time or um, all the resources to do so, but I really love how it turned out anyway. Um, I usually try to add many things to my designs, but I try to tone it down for this one to get the point across. And the design being an open space civilian uh, that encourages students to connect with nature was a, a huge factor and as seen on like the garden on the ceiling and the bushes along the sides and under the pavilion itself. Um, yeah. Hi, my name is Alea and I will be showing you my project, oops, sorry, um, called Gateway Gardens. My project or my site was basically built off the Doug Pond 2 area and it was the 0.12 acre area which was closest to the parking lot. And then it's circled on the top right picture, as you can see. And then my site analysis is on the bottom left. My design process really started off with me going um, on to the Doug Pond area, trying to fill the fill of the environment just to see how I wanted something to be right there. So I had um, sketched up uh, some sketches of some pavilions and everything. The first one was more of like a building type area with a bridge. And then the second one is more of like an entryway. Um, so I did have these two designs um, proceeded on with the project. And these were the ones I kind of built up and developed off of. Next, I had developed a bubble diagram, as you can see on the top left, just to help with the placement of everything. Now the buildings and the pathway will combine together. And then on the top right is a more descriptive and developed type uh, sketch of how I wanted it to be. Um, I did get a few features from my previous project. The first one is the bridge, obviously. Um, this one came from the Invisible City Project, and I developed the bridge by adding a roof, a glass roof, to make it more convenient for people because I didn't want like an open bridge, um, just in case it was running or anything, this would be sheltered. And the bridge basically just connected one bridge to the, um, not bridge, but one building to the other. It's kind of like a transportation. Um, the second one was the towers. This actually came from the tower design as well. The towers in the roofs, the triangle roofs, I uh, incorporated that into my final project so that the roofs wouldn't be all plain and everything and it would have a development from my, pro my previous projects. Uh, the next one is a ramp, the ramp. This came from my ping project, actually. This was about a being's pathway. I just kind of transformed this into a rail, a rail design, sorry. 
a ramp design, and trying to make Gateway Gardens a more ADA, ADA accessible. So that is what I did with the ramp. The last one was the gateway. So the East Gateway was based off the design from the Moriana emblem I made. As you can see in the picture right, right here of the emblem, there is kind of like a gateway entrance into this big type of building. So that's what I kind of did, incorporated that into my gateway gardens design. Um, tried to make the gateway more of like a suspense or a surprise. So when you walk in, it's more of a, you know, you just see everything or you see more and more stuff as you go through that gateway. The support for the buildings, like the columns made out of steel or concrete. I had an idea to make a tree-like column to incorporate more to the landscape, make it more natural. And then the bridge could be like a trust bridge or a suspended, a suspension bridge and the support would be coming from the two buildings so that it would be supported but just in case that's not enough support I would add columns on the bottom which is also made out of steel or concrete. College student proof. I had to think about this um, throughout my design process trying to make the walls at least four feet tall so that people can see over everything but enough so that people aren't, you know, falling over, you know, any accidents would happen. Um, the rails are at least four, three to four feet tall as well. Um, I try to make this material durable material so that the sites and the landscape wouldn't get messed up and less easy to destroy. Seating areas, there are four seating areas around the site. Um, the first one is the round table on the first level of building one, as you can see on the bottom left, um, kind of in the corner of this building right here. Um, the painted table is actually under the green roof, as you can see on the bottom right. It is the first seating area you would notice when you walk into this design, into Gateway Gardens. So it was sit about four to six people, dependable. Um, the third one is the corner table. So the corner table is on the second level of building one. And it's kind of looking at the green roof and the outside of the level, you know, just have a seating area up there. And then the semicircle seating is the one that's closest to the duck pond under building two. Um, so I put it under the building just in case, you know, it kind of rains on you. You still have a coverage so that, you know, you don't get wet. Building elements in my design. Okay, so the gateway, I would try to make it automatic so that it's accessible for everyone and you don't have to be closing open the gates. Um, the doors will be made out of rod iron and the columns will be out of brick or limestone. Um, there will be an entryway with a vaulted roof, which is the triangle roof, as you can see. Um, the green roof uh, has a seating area underneath, as I mentioned earlier, the picnic table. Um, the bridge will have a vaulted translucent, translucent ceiling so that, again, in case it rains, you know, you have a shelter but you know you can see up in the sky you know with see-through and glass and then the two-story building is a pergola deck I hope I'm saying that right and then the one-story building is kind of like a balcony so when you go up there you can still look at the duck pond overview and everything and then the ramps the material for the ramps will be made out of rod iron as well for the rails so it's still durable Finally, my perspective drawings here. Um, my one point perspective is on the left and then my two point perspective is on the right. And then my model, as you can see. Thank you. Hello, this is Drake Milsna from section one of CAP 101 and 161 for spring 2021. And this is my unit 5.2 presentation. So, the model, the structure we built for Unit 5.2, I've dubbed it the Fractured Cube. Bit of an intimidating name, perhaps, maybe, yes. 
but there is meaning behind it. There is an origin story for this name, which I will get into later in this presentation. So starting off with the site for the uh, model that we built, I chose Duck Pond 2, which is on the northern end of our beautiful Ball State campus. It is west of North McKinley Avenue, which you can kind of see the road in the upper right hand of this picture here. And the red square here, the 0.12 acres of land, that represents the site that the model was constructed on. And as you can see on the right hand side, there are some pictures of the site supplied by Professor Deeg. And in the bottom here is a site analysis for the site. Moving on to some concept sketches for the initial structure. Uh, I pulled heavily from our tile project that we did earlier in the year. Um, as you can see here, the floor design for my structure, or I guess the initial floor design, is pulled from this tile in the middle upper section. Um, earlier in my design, I had an idea to have three windows that would sort of frame the duck pond. And each window would have a sort of, I don't know what you would call it, uh, say a window sticker sort of framing to help frame the view a bit. And these frames themselves were inspired by tiles. So, so a lot of elements from these tiles and some of the other tiles not necessarily shown here were recycled into this uh, structure. Like a lot of the triangle diamond sort of shapes are taken from the tiles and yeah the tile project was a big influence for this structure um, earlier designs for my structure had a very sort of boxy shape um, there would be two paths leading to the general structure along with the framed windows and railings on each side as well as a slanted triangle roof which I thought would provide cover as well as not cover the entire floor so it still left some sunlight in along with the sunlight that would come in from the windows and the uh, open sides of the structure. So this is the design I was leaning towards for a majority of the time and uh, I reviewed the design with Professor Deeg and he suggested that the design be expanded out. Um, something he pointed out was that the overall design was very square, it was very boxy in shape. It was sort of looked just plopped onto the site. And he encouraged me to expand out, make it um, morph into the site more. Not so much look like it was plopped there, but that it was always part of the site. So, starting over and sort of building up from the ground, I built a concept model. And as you can see, the uh, same floor pattern carried over into the design. And I kept the extruded diamonds, but I also extruded certain parts of the floor. So while the original design was very much a cube shape, this is more of an exploded sort of cube. There's, it has a cube-like shape. The structure is still there but there's components coming off. There's little fragmented pieces coming off to the side and up top. And so I think it turned out quite well, thanks to Deke's suggestions. So with my concept model made and the uh, floor plan made, I went on to constructing my final model, which can be seen here. Um, same design as the concept model, really with the addition of paths branching off. These would lead to the road, or more so the sidewalk running alongside the road, and from there would connect to other buildings close to the site. Um, I included some shrubbery, some trees as well. And at the back of the site, I decided to include a little rock boulder garden of sorts. Mainly just because I think rock gardens are cool, but this could also be a spot for people to sit and relax along the trees, uh, maybe have a campfire lot here. There's lots of opportunities that can be done here. Um, as for the fragmented cube itself, I had supports built into the ground to sort of help tie it in with the overall landscape. As um, 
Dig mentioned before with my initial design, it looked more so just sort of plopped under the site. So I thought having these supports come out of the ground and also out of the water would help tie it into the overall site. And then here are my perspective drawings accompanying the final product. The one point perspective is a side view, sort of helps show the size of the structure in comparison to the uh, people drawn in. Excuse me, it also shows the trail going off and the trees in the background. And then my two point perspective is more of an inside look at the structure, showing the different seating opportunities, the different elevations, uh, the shadows going on there. I forgot to point out earlier, there's windows along these walls here to help look out over the lake. So uh, these perspective drawings sort of help show the size and the internal workings of the structure itself. So with that concludes my presentation. Thanks for watching. Hi, my name is Madeline Myers, and my final project is called The Pondside Garden. I took inspiration from my city tile shelf, as well as the model. I wanted to keep something similar to this unusual elevation. Uh, I also enjoyed the cylindrical shapes I had, and the interested, interesting negative space that I had the visitors walking through. Similar to that model, and the reasons why I took inspiration from it, I used my ping model. I wanted to keep something similar to the repeating columns I had going on. Uh, I liked the triangular roofing. I also wanted to keep the important interaction I had between formal and informal forms in this, uh, which is demonstrated through the archways and the twisting track. I also used a little bit of my workshop study model for inspiration. Uh, I mainly used it for the idea of scale and the I wanted to see the interaction between the structure and the visitors. For, um, uh, for outside inspiration, I looked at Peter Zumther's Serpentine Pavilion uh, that was temporarily set up in Kensington Gardens in London. What I really enjoyed about this and what I wanted to try and recreate was Peter Zumther's element of the garden. He had, he showed the interaction between people and nature and I wanted to create something similar to that. I am from Fort Wayne, Indiana and I've been to this park many, many times. I thought it would be really interesting to take some elements from this. Uh, Lakeside Park and Rose Gardens has a lot of symmetry, a lot of the columns that I've been using throughout pretty much my whole semester with most of my projects. This seems to be what I gravitate towards and I thought it'd be interesting to use this. I ended up looking, I ended up using Duck Pond 2 as my site. Uh, as you can see in my site plan view, I picked the square near the road for like an easier access for visitors. What's really special about this site is the way I have my space positioned. The, the visitors can watch the sun set due west. It's really special. Uh, I really I did draw a few drawings, but I jumped right in with doing a di digital model to see if I could plan out my ideas. Uh, I started out with a more U-shaped plan. I had many columns as I was planning. Uh, I had a focus on the center garden and leading towards that uh, more decorative dome. I wanted to have a statue. I also kept a lot of the same symmetry that I've been using and I didn't have, I kept it more away from the water because I wasn't sure what I was going to do quite yet. And then it all led up to my final model of Pondside Garden. As you can see, I, def I kept the repeating columns. Uh, visitors interact with negative space as they're moving through the columns and around the garden. I did more of an L shape and I opened it up for more seating. There's also space now for a staircase to lead down to the water for more seating. 
most of the visitor circulation paths lead directly, uh, they lead towards the garden inwards or they lead towards the center statue in the decorative dome. I also kept most of the seating facing the garden and there's seating of course facing towards the water for that view of the sunset. Garden is the center focus. I will, as I said before, I wanted to recreate or keep the element of the relationship between formal and informal forms, as well as the relationship between people and nature. I imagine this space to be a very calm study space or just a very nice place to stretch and walk, your, walk yourself through. Hello, my name is Andrew Porter and here is my final design. My design is called the Garden Pavilion and which is, this is this site is, the site area is located on Duck Pond 2. Duck Pond 2 is located on the front of campus, right by North Residence Hall, both Johnson complexes, and right by the new teacher's dorm and living complex as well. The bottom right is where it's, my site is, highlighted in blue there, is located where, and then if you look at the site analysis, which is located on the left, you can see how it's zoomed in shot and zoomed in viewpoint. There is no trees really around the side. There's no really shaded. So I would have to, I'm gonna have to plant some trees there. This is a panorama, panorama shot of the of Duck Pond 2. And my site is located just to the left of those trees over there. These are the ideas that I've had for the pavilion. So I was sitting at my desk one day and I realized Oh, I might as well incorporate my emblem and just incorporate the design of it. And so I went back all the way from unit one and I look, just looked at all the artwork around me and that's what I did. I went into SketchUp because I know SketchUp and I like using it because it makes it look precise and makes it look realistic and makes me have an idea of what it really truly looks like. And so I used the, the arch, arch process of like a bridge feel because Phyllis is like a small city with connected, it's just like an island, with a bunch of bridges, stair, stairways. Then we went into a study model and a topography graph to really understand how it feels, how we can move it in the different views and the viewpoints and connections. And then here is the final model views that I did. And then you have the people in different viewpoints, different angles, looking down, walking around through the gate, through the sides. And then here are also some human scale viewpoints, which is on the promontory in the top left. Next one over is just another side shot from the water, zooming out from a distance. And then you have this staircase, nice, nice shot of someone going up the stairs coming back from their nice view, wanting to head back to their dorm. And then we also had to do some perspective viewpoints of our site as well. So you have the dome on the left side, and then that is a statue or a monument. It could be, that's what I, that's what I want it to be, a statue. And then you have, it's the double arches with the boards, the boards are using as I-beams or in detail, the, shining through, looking over, and you have the tree at the end, so it doesn't go into infinity. And then the two, you have the two point perspective viewpoint, which is of the entire site, most of it at least, and it really gets a good point of, the, of the trees, two trees being on the site, being around, and details that stone, the tables and the rocks that children could play on, and people just walking through, moving, circulating, through the place itself with walking down the stairway, walking past the stone, the limestone wall. And that's basically my design. And I hope you like it. The third site I gave for the students to consider is a as what we will call Park Hall Pond. Park Hall is a fairly recent uh, uh, student residence hall uh, with, with a couple of smaller outdoor outdoor social areas, as well as a terrace, uh, a fountain, a recirculating fountain, and the beginning of the Cardinal Creek system, which uh, carries much of our stormwater runoff from the eastern part of campus, carries it underneath the arena and towards the duck pond. So all, all three of these sites are connected together by Cardinal Creek, and uh, there are a couple of 
uh, interesting possibilities for uh, engagement, uh, social engagement here uh, close to these residence halls, including Stu, e Stu West, Stu East, and Park Hall. Some photos of the existing conditions at the Park Hall Pond. Okay. Hi. My name is Haven Hanna, and I'm in the CAP uh, first year program, and I going to be presenting my final project. Let me share screen. I named my project the Andrea Project um, because that is the city I chose. Uh, when we first started out this year, we were assigned the task to read the book and choose the top three cities we enjoyed the most. Um, mine personally was Andrea because it was known as the city of stars. It talked about how the whole city aligned like a constellation. They looked up to the um, planets in space. Um, after choosing our city, we had to um, go through a series of black and white designs using only straight lines, um, squares, triangles and circles um then we had to describe why we chose this city of course i chose the city because it talks of celestial bodies and the constellations and uh, i enjoy uh, the space space status in general um after that we were assigned the task um of making different aspects and different types of transformations based on our original design and then create a whole new design altogether. And then we had to talk about why we chose what we did for each different definition. After that, we um, designed our own shields to represent our town. I continued to the process of um, depicting the Capricorn, as you can see, I have the horns in the bottom, and then I also have the bridge right here. I ended up making a big open space area with high ceilings and curved edges. Then after that, we took um, those shapes and created our own tiles. We had to make nine tiles, and we later ended up combining them together to make our own city viewpoint from above. And this was one of my forms of inspiration because it led me to wanting to continue the high ceilings because I like the thought process of having the high ceilings and big open areas like I did here and then the end project. Because after we built the tiles, we made the project coming out from our design and then we connected them together to show that the tiles, our final yellow project lined up with our tiles and our shapes. Our last final project for this phase was deciding on a pond to choose from and then a specific spot in that pond. Here were the some examples of the first point and second point perspective. I drew something simple that I thought would be an easy slim design with the curved ceiling top to allow for shading. I later ended up using this as well. I depicted the view that they would have from that standing point. Then over here, I added a much larger scale design that involved three stories and plenty of shading right that goes up, comes over the water and connects to the other paths and it's net located next to the lookout point that's already there right outside of park finally i have the sky view along with the notes i had took depicting on where my location was chosen here the dotted spot area that's where my location was chosen then we have what direction the sun would be coming and what trees were already there. I then had to draw some final perspectives of my final draft and project in general. I ended up going with that same sort of 
um, huge roof and high ceilings, except I made it to where it was completely sheltered. So water, you wouldn't get rain on if you decided to go underneath. And I did that kind of zigzag effect to draw in the tension of more guests. And as you can see, it's handicap accessible. So the handicap would be able to go out on the dock and look over at the pond, as well as the staircase I added right here. It's stepping stones, but it's connected with ramps. Then with my first point, it shows you basically just the view perspective of what it would look like if you were standing from behind the dock so you could see what you, you would see walking towards it, as well as the trees on the sides. Some other leading inspiration that led to this as well would be our ping pong project that we made that we had to allow for three different balls to travel down. Um, some key inspiration would be the staircase I was quite proud um, of the way it turned out and I included some moons and stars to get that idea of the the starry feeling to it as well as what later led on to the pattern above my path it gave me that idea of having that open ceiling type as well as on the main picture here with the final project just to get you an idea on what um, came together to give me the ideas. Here is the aside portfolio of my high ceiling and what it came to look out in the end, as well as trees I added on and all the forest perspectives being this being the main front view of what you're looking at here, as well as the hammocks, the stepping stone, the high ceilings, over the water, handicap accessible. Here shows you their perspective of what they would be looking at standing on the railing. You can see that the ceiling gives a nice shadow effect and it allows the viewers to enjoy the scenery from below and afar. Here is the pic that I, the picture I took my perspective drawings based off of that shows what it would look like from your perspective going in. And then that is all for my presentation. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. Hi guys, it's Maria and this is my presentation for Park Hall Communal. Starting off with the site analysis, um, the site I chose to create a design for was Park Hall Duck Pond, and the site square that I went ahead and chose to create a design was this one right here. And on my visits to the site, I went ahead and took note of existing trees in the area and sidewalks and paveways around the duck pond and the site itself. Moving on to study model. Um, this study model was made in our workshop and in this study model I went ahead and explored the possibility of open space while it still being protection from the weather um, and also having not large enough spaces where someone could potentially hide and be a hazard. I also went ahead and included like a sitting area type of bench and I also included a area for child play. I went ahead and took inspiration from my shield project. And what I took from inspiration here was my multi-row block towers where I played with spacing of the blocks, which I wanted to incorporate in my final design. I also took inspiration from an Instagram page that I follow um, it comes from an architecture based Instagram called Architecture Dream Houses. Um, what I took from inspiration here was the glass windows and glass walls. Um, I overall like the aesthetic of the openness that these windows and walls give and the feeling of being close to the outside, yet still be protected from the outside. Lastly, the last thing I took inspiration from was this 
restaurant in Berlin, Switzerland. And what I took from inspiration was the openness of the sitting area and also the glass walls, as well as the angled dock that is extended into the water and the openness of no roof added to this area. These are my first round of perspective drawings. Um, there are sketches that I was just playing around with, different ideas of potential models that I could build. And these are my second round of perspective sketches. And here I was more focused on the glass wall design and it having an extension of a dock in onto the water and still having that openness where you can see the outside. And these are my final perspective drawings. This is my one point and my two point. Finally, we have the model itself from the top, front, and side view. Um, the final model here um, was by far the most satisfying project I was able to work on, seeing the processes and the, the steps of design come into a model was amazing. Um, so here I included a section with roofing right here. It's essentially a sitting area where it has tables and chairs for people to be able to socialize and then I also decided to include an angled deck where it has no roof to have people who want to receive the sunshine and not, you know, being close. They still have that opportunity while it also giving a nice view of the pond. Hi, my name is Ranker Koontz and this is my final project for CAP 101 and 161 Section 1 Spring 2021, which is Pagoda at Park Hall Pond. All right, starting out, we have the site view and the plan view for Park Hall Pond, which is the site I decided to go with for my project. Um, I chose Park Hall Pond because I live in Neuer, so it's really close, so I was really familiar with it. And I like that there was already some stuff around there to work with, so that was the one I decided to go with. The top picture is the Google Earth view, and the bottom picture is the plan view. Next up are my influences for this project, which uh, is a combination of all of our past projects we've done. Um, the common theme among all my past projects is movement. So as you can see in every single one I have, I have liked to incorporate movement. That's the design principle I feel I feel the most connected to. It's the one I like working with the most. And the thing I like about it the most is the use of simple lines that um, line weight, direction, they all create movement um, very well. It's very simple, very easy to work with. So that's what I wanted to incorporate into this project as well. This is my site analysis for the Park Hall, site at Park Hall Pond. Um, this helps me decide which part of the pond I wanted to use to build my development on. So you can see in the notes on the side and just taking into accommodation all the other factors that go into this site itself. These are my initial photos that I took um, when finding out where I wanted to put the development um, at the pond. I originally wanted to use the northern side of the pond, as you can see with all like the rocks existing there, I thought that would be cool to incorporate them in this. But as I researched it further, I decided it might not be the best place to put it because there was already a lot going on with the rocks and I um, ended up deciding to go with using the south side of Park Hall Pond because there was a lot of empty space there and I didn't want to disrupt um, the rocks already over on the north side. And I feel like using the south side with all this blank space, it connects better with the existing waterfall and the bridge, which are already pretty big uh, landscape areas around the pond. So these are the final photos I decided to use to um, influence and build on my development.
these are my initial process sketches, my perspective views, and over on the right, just a quick sketch of what I wanted to do. Um, my goal was simplicity because there's already a lot going on at Park, Park Hall Pond with, again, with the waterfall already and the bridge over on the other side, closer to Studebaker West. So I feel like there was already going around, there was already a lot going on, but I still wanted to bring something else in, but not overdo it since there was already a lot going on. Um, I like the idea of having a proventory, something coming out into the water, which is what I've incorporated in both of these sketches right here. And I'm also influenced a lot by Japanese architecture and a lot of stuff by Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright. So I like the idea of the pagodas with the hipped roofs and the spires on the top. So that's, you can see that in the sketch on the right and the sketch on the bottom. And with the idea of the proventory, I like something coming out in over top of the water. So that's what I started to incorporate with these sketches. These are my final perspectives that I went with. Um, again, with the proventory, something coming out over the water. Um, something simple, um, not too complex, but was an area to sit. I feel like with the waterfall right there, there's the seating area on top, but it's not really comfortable to sit. There's not really a lot of shade and the seating's just not great overall. So I wanted to incorporate like some, sort of a shelter almost somewhere where you can sit down over top of the water and feel more connected with it. So that's what I was going for with my final perspective drawings. And this is my final model. Um, I didn't get to do a lot of study models because I had COVID the first week we did this project. So I was already starting a little bit behind but I was playing around with what I wanted to do um, with my actual development um, when I started building it. So I finalized on the idea of having one single support coming up from the ground to hold um, the shelter up, which is also kind of influenced by the movement, as you can see with the two supports going out to the side and then coming up and then going up with the spire on top. So I decided on that and then that also works in with the Japanese architecture of float like um, buildings look like looking like they're floating and then the movement with the uh, walkway up as well with uh, railings on the sides being completely vertical and then tying this all in it's simple um, it's some it's something it's a landscape area something to do somewhere to sit but it doesn't overdo it with the other things already at Park Hall and again, the movement with all the vertical lines and moving back and forth. And that is my project. Thank you. My name is Kyle. And my chosen site was Park Hall Pond. Uh, why I chose Park Hall Pond, I'm very familiar with the site. I live just um, across the way at Stew West. So I see Park Hall Pond just about every day, multiple times a day. And yeah, I'm very grateful that I live next to it. It's very beautiful. It's very nice. It's a great spot for uh, people to hang out. Um, some ideas and brainstorming that went into my site's design. So on the left here, we have my site analysis, which was pretty basic for my chosen site. Um, and then to the right is my fold-up site, which I would say had a little bit to do with my site, but not too much. My biggest inspiration was definitely from Professor Deeg. He gave me an idea to where it would sort of imitate my shield as to where the arrows would become the walkways and the middle part would be the path, more like a form of datum. And yeah, so I, Heard that and kind of just took it and ran with it. So this was my model in progress. Um, as you can see, the path up the middle was sort of the line of datum and then the two paths coming down to the seating areas would be the arrows represented in the shield. Um, this was my final model. So as you can see, sort of in the top right photo, the mode of datum that I attempted to use imitating my shield and yeah 
So thank you very much, class. Hi, I'm Emiliana and I'm gonna be talking about my project. Okay, so here's my final project. And I chose to do the parkhall.com and I created or I designed an outdoor community space for students and visitors. And here's my site analysis. And I chose to do this square right here. And that's the site analysis for that square. Um, here are some inspiration pictures from my, uh, from the 3D shapes and forms of the tiles project. And here's the, these two pictures are from my paint project that I also took as an inspiration for my final project. And then I also used the study models we uh, made in class for inspiration too. Here's my final project. I have a small um, pavilion for, for students and visitors and they have a few table, a couple tables inside of them. So they can be used as a hangout place or also for students to do homework. I also added a, I also added stairs and a small jetty for at the end. And for the stairs, I took the inspiration from the pin model and the, here they are. And for the railings, I took inspiration from also the pin model. And for the roof, I took inspiration from the study model we made in class from right here that these two pieces are like some, somehow a way to stop the rain from coming into the space. And that's all. Thank you. Howdy, uh, this is Lars uh, and I will be doing my presentation for the CAP 101 and 161 uh, final pavilion project. So I am calling this the Park Hall Ponds Flats as uh, the site is situated at Park Hall Pond. Uh, for those who might be unfamiliar with Park Hall Pond, it is in the eastern section of the Ball State campus and uh, yeah, it's a nice little pond, has a bit of a deck going on, uh, look out on the water. Uh, a couple of trees, but it's rather barren, rather sparse. And uh, we were assigned to create a pavilion uh, for students and faculty and visitors uh, to enjoy. So uh, in choosing the site, uh, you know, uh, we went around campus and examined where we might want to build our pavilion and I took a great interest in this area in particular because I, I saw up here uh, with this uh, sort of deck area that I mentioned before there is an opportunity to look out on the water however there's not as much of an opportunity to interact with each other as well as to just have a nice place to sit and relax uh, because the building behind there uh, has classrooms, uh, so you don't really want to distract uh, any students in there either. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I chose this area because I thought I could create a unique opportunity uh, for people to enjoy the water. Uh, so we also, for this project, had to do a site analysis. Uh, so, you know, drew a little diagram, added some color for some uh, added effect. Uh, and I did a, a short SWOT analysis of the site, uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. Um, and I, I liked this site most because you had good access uh, from Park Hall as well as uh, the Studebaker East and West and the parking garage. Uh, for people to walk into um, the pavilion area and then be able to enjoy the space. Um, some of the weaknesses, uh, you know, could include flooding, but 
Uh, thankfully, the pond is already maintained well enough that that doesn't happen too often. But yeah, you know, some of the opportunities I mentioned before uh, is, is seating, uh, maybe the uh, uh, an ability to, you know, relax and even enjoy uh, the area and play. Um, and I'd say by far, though, biggest threat at Park Hall Pond are those darn Canadian geeses. Oh, man, they like to, uh, you know, nest there in the springtime, but hopefully... They shouldn't be too much of an issue. So when we were told about this project, um, admittingly, I was having a bit of a rough time uh, coming up with the concepts of how I wanted to tackle it, especially tying it into past projects that we did. Um, over this semester, we've uh, been working with an invisible city, um, and mine is Esmeralda. Um, which is a city uh, very similar to Venice with many tiers and layers and bridges and uh, walkways and whatnot. Uh, so I had to kind of figure out a way to incorporate this, these characteristics into my design. And I think what I really settled on is this idea of the city of Esmeralda being tiered, having the, these different levels and layers to it. Uh, which you can kind of see here in my drawings. Uh, this also kind of developed with my with the ball run project. Um, as you can see with the pictures here, um, there are different levels and pathways to take. Um, and this is also kind of where I develop um, my sense of circulation that I want for uh, this pavilion design. I enjoy the idea of almost a switchback kind of um, curving around and through. And um, this is another example. This is actually um, the amphitheater steps outside of Emmons Auditorium. Um, I, I enjoy the uh, flowing motion um, that you can take uh, by going around kind of these obstacles. Uh, so then, uh, with this project, we developed our uh, one-point and two-point perspectives. Uh, and this was my first one-point perspective. Uh, the idea was kind of just to create a platform, you know, for people to look out on uh, and sit and have a good time. And then a second idea, we um, worked on this as a class together, um, but I developed it s slightly further. Um, the big thing that stood out to me um, with this two points for perspective, and even though it wasn't on the site I originally had in mind, is adding these swing sets um, for people to, you know, sit on, swing, uh, have a date uh, and whatnot. Uh, so I, I liked that idea and I, I did want to run with that and I'm happy that I uh, was able to. Model development wise, um, I, I was in a, a bit of a, of, a rough, bleh, of a rough spot. I was having a hard time kind of translating, um, you know, the past projects to this. And then funnily, or yeah, funnily enough, uh, it kind of clicked. I was messing around with my uh, 45, uh, 45, 90 degree triangle, and I just put it on our... Uh, Top topographic model. And I said, right there, that's our platform. So that's kind of where I developed it. And I, I also got inspiration for the swing sets, um, as you can see in the picture to the right, uh, in downtown Carmel, um, which is where I am from, uh, outside of uh, Sun King Brewery, there's a nice little patio area for people to uh, enjoy uh, some drinks and food. And they have this very, very nice um, integrated swing set and benches. And that's what I wanted to include in my model. Um, but yeah, you can kind of see, you know, the rough development model. I was just sort of placing things down, seeing uh, where stuff would fit. And I, I did enjoy that method of kind of placing physical things uh, down on the project um, rather than trying to come up with it in, in a drawing form. So for the final model, uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, 
I was able to develop it well. Um, you can see I brought in the different tiers, the different levels. Uh, the lowest one is closest to the water um, for people to really take in that experience. And they have to go wind around, uh, circulate around and down um, to that spot. Uh, the middle platform is uh, the largest uh, area aside from the top. Uh, and I kind of developed that as a space for people to hang out and eat um, and sit and relax. Uh, you have a couple of benches and tables. And my idea with the tables is that those would be movable and have movable seating um, for people to, um, you know, take where they want. Um, and then the top level, um, we wanted to integrate uh, ADA accessible um, for people uh, in wheelchairs. Uh, to still enjoy the view. So that's why, you know, the top level still has that tier, that last tier peeking out uh, so they uh, can still enjoy the view. And there in the back, you can see the, the swing set, uh, the swing bench um, for people to sit on and enjoy. You also have a couple of regular kind of covered benches. Uh, if it happens to rain, people can be protected by that. Uh, added a couple of trees because uh, Park Hall Pond, as I said, uh, was a little bit barren. And then we have these rocks down by the water um, to kind of flow into the rock work um, that is near the deck that is currently there in the waterfall. Here are a couple more images, uh, more from the perspective of how you might see it if you were there. And here are my pers final perspective drawings. I added a couple of details that I, I couldn't exactly get. Uh, these uh, little plants by the water. Uh, sadly, I was not able to incorporate that into the final model. Yeah, so thank you uh, for watching. I very much enjoyed this project. Uh, it was a very fun experience uh, and a different way of developing a model kind of working through different uh, forms with uh, drawings and referencing our past projects that we've done throughout this uh, semester uh, was a real treat. Um, yeah. So